everyone, this is Aaron for Zolo Tech, and we're going to review the PlayStation Vita. This model is actually the first edition release, but that really isn't much different other than the bundle itself. So what it comes with is the Vita, and it's the 3G and Wi-Fi Vita. You can get this in two different models for 250 and 300, depending on whether it has 3G or not. And that 3G is provided by AT&T here in the U.S., now the 3G is monthly, it's similar to an iPad as far as the cost goes, but we're not going to talk too much about that, we're going to focus more on the Vita itself. The Vita is a really nice handheld console, and I fear it's one of the last, it's really nice, it's design is really very nice looking on the front. We've got a beautiful 5 inch OLED display with a 960 by 544 display. Uh, it's very vibrant, very beautiful, and I'll show you that in a moment. The overall buttons and everything feel really solid. It's actually a little bit lighter than you would expect, and that's maybe because there's no drive mechanism. This device uses straight memory for everything, and that's a good thing and a bad thing. But let's go over the outside and the hardware. So the hardware itself is a quad-core processor, very fast, uh, really nice. The graphics this puts out with its separate graphic processor and comes with no memory internal. You actually have to buy a proprietary memory card, either in a bundle or by itself in different variants of sizes and very expensive. So this is a four gigabyte version and it holds a couple games, but if you're going to be buying a lot of games from the store, you're going to want to buy something a little bit different as far as that goes, as far as size goes. You want to go, to go up a few sizes and that gets pretty expensive, so you'll need more than four gigabytes. Uh, to give you an example, uh, Uncharted is a couple gigabytes, so you're going to need something rather large if you're going to put a lot of games on here. So on the bottom we have our charge port, and it could be a sync port. It's kind of a proprietary connector, and the other end goes to USB into a wall charger. Here we have our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have a couple loops at the bottom you could put straps on if you needed to. On this side, we really don't have anything. On the back, we have the touch panel, and this is a capacitive touch panel, as is the front screen as well. On this side, we have our SIM card slot. If we pop this open, we can slide out the SIM card, and it's an AT&T SIM card. I don't have it active, but it always does give me signal, and you can activate it at any time and turn it off at any time, and you pay for a month's usage. Now the front itself, we have two analog controllers. To the left and right of each of these is the speakers, which sound pretty nice. And we have our D-pad on the top and our normal X square, triangle, and O or circle. Here we have a VGA forward-facing camera, and then we have a VGA camera on the back as well. These aren't really great for taking pictures. They're more for virtual reality type games. Now on the top we have our power button and sleep-wake button. This does suspend. We also have our memory card at the top here, and this isn't really a memory card. It's more of the game port, but it is a memory card. It's like an SD card, but this is the game itself. This is Uncharted place this in here and it's under this little panel which is okay but it's not great I fear that it might break over time and then under here we have an auxiliary port I'm not really sure what this is going to be used for yet but it's there and then we have our volume up and down and we have our bumpers at the top or R1 and L1 or L and R in this case so let's go ahead and turn it on and it was in suspense, so I just tapped the button. It comes up here, it says the SIM card was removed. It wants me to restart. So this will give you an idea how long it takes to restart. Not too long to start, but some of the load times of the games are a little bit long. So I would definitely suggest uh, anyone that's uh, in a hurry not really try and take this on the go with them. Now you can see battery life up here. Battery has gone down quite a bit and it's not great on battery it's not horrible but it's about the same as a 3ds you get a few hours and then you'll need to plug it in so here we unlock the home screen we just peel the screen off and the user interface is pretty nice and you can see there it is it plays music through the user interface and we can just use the touch screen up and down we can't use the d-pad or analog stick and when we open something this multitask so if i open little deviants which isn't in there go back We'll open Luminous, it's a trial. Uncharted. We didn't actually start the game. We have to have tap on this and it will start the game. And I'll show you that in a moment. And we can go home. If I hit the PlayStation button on the home screen, 
it will bring us to this little multitasking interface and I can tap on this one. It goes back. If I want to close this, I just peel it off the screen and we're back. And that closes everything in the upper right. We have this little bubble it kind of gives you an idea of what's going on. So if you're downloading trials and things like Rayman origins, it will show you its status up here. And here's more if we have more information. It's connected via Wi Fi to my home network, is really fast. And some of the other features it has is Maps. And Maps is, uh, is a great app. It's like Google Maps, but it uses GPS. It has a built in GPS. It also has an accelerometer and a gyro and Bluetooth. So it's got just about any little wireless antenna that you would want and could provide great navigation if you needed it. It's got a beautiful screen for that. We have settings and music and video remote play. I played around with a little bit, but it doesn't really do a whole lot right now. You can control your PS three with it, but there aren't any games that I was able to play with it yet. It says it wasn't available yet. And then there's some demos as well. So let's go ahead and open uncharted and I'll give you an idea of the load times. It says the network feature has been disabled. Not really sure why. Let me go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. You can see the screen's highly reflective and it's kind of to be expected. And it's, it's really nice to look at, but under bright light, you're going to see some reflection here and there. The back touch touch panel is used in this game to climb ropes. And you simply move your fingers like this to climb a rope. It's kind of generic, but it, it's not horrible. Uh, it can be used or you don't have to use it at all. I think the features they've integrated in uncharted are, are quite nice. So we'll touch the start. We'll continue hit yes. And we're on easy difficulty right now. You can see it's loading and there really isn't any anti-aliasing or not great anti-aliasing. And that means it takes the little jaggies out of, of uh, corner objects or rounded objects. It's not great, but it does. Okay. So it's telling me the battery level is low. It's playing music speakers sound great. You'll turn it down a little bit. So you can see the graphics are quite nice. I can control like this. Uh, if I aim with my left trigger here, I can move this around with the gyro and compass inside. And this allows me to get a more accurate aim on what I'm aiming at. So if I can walk here, you use the touch screen to climb, or you can, you can simply use the buttons. It's up to you. And I like that they give you that choice. So if I aim here, we can aim and then kind of zero in. It's a little bit tough to do while I'm on a camera here, but kind of zero in by doing this. You can see it. It's pretty nice. It says bounty collected. So it's uncharted and it feels like the full featured game on a PS three. It looks great. Music's great. The presentation overall is good. I haven't played the whole game. This is only the second major chapter, but overall it looks great. Like I said, we'll just do this part here. You can see there's more enemies as well. Now at any time I can hit the PlayStation button and it will suspend. I can hit continue and go right back into the action. So let me zoom out a little bit. And you can see it's really nice. Now, if I want to start another game, it's going to jump you off of that app. If I go into here and try and start it, the, the cartridge isn't in there, but it says you'll close the following application, which isn't a problem because we want to play that game. So overall, not too bad. Let me just show you the camera quick. Let's go into the camera. And the camera is okay. Like I said, let's go ahead and take have an iPhone here. Let's take the iPhone, put it in the background. It takes okay images. It's not great. I can flip the camera or take a picture here. We can flip the camera around. Uh, it does an okay job. You can see that's me here uh, with the headphones and the microphone and the camera, but overall uh, it's okay. I wouldn't recommend it for pictures unless you really needed to take a picture with this camera. But as far as a game machine, it's solid and you can do other things like browse the web with it. And we can do that quickly as well. Uh, you can see the keyboard's actually pretty nice. Get rid of this and we'll go to Zolotech.com. But it doesn't load particularly fast when you scroll. Uh, it reminds me of an old iPhone, actually. 
can see see it's got the little checkerboard pattern down here but same thing pinch to zoom it's very fast due to the quad core processor and it's nice if you need a web browser on the go overall i definitely recommend the vita it's a little bit steep price point at this time but overall it's a great system looks great everyone i've shown it to is impressed by the graphics uh, more so than they thought they would be most of them say it's lighter than they thought that they thought it would be but really nice overall wish it had a little bit better battery life and it's a little hard to protect if you're if you're good at dinging things up really easy this one's going to be a little bit harder since you've got to protect the front and back for the touch panel and the touch screen but overall really nice beautiful beautiful console and i can't wait to see what comes out for it later on call of duty things like that so if you have any comments about it if you've used one uh, if you have any suggestions about it that I may have missed, please go ahead and place those in the comments below. I love to hear what you have to say about uh, all the different devices we take a look at here. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.